Welcome to the Success Fitness Podcast. I am your host, Christian Evans. This podcast is about helping improve your relationship with diet and exercise to achieve success in your fitness journey. In today's show, we have our guest, Felicia Starks of FeliciaStarks.com and StarkNakedNutrition.com. Felicia is a mother, a certified fitness nutrition specialist, and personal trainer working exclusively with busy moms and professional women who want to get rid of unwanted fat, hold them accountable to their goals, and end the diet mentality. In 2004, she took control of her life, mindset, and body by transforming from a size 16 to a size 4, even after having her son. She has been able to maintain the weight loss for over 15 years and counting. In 2012, she became a certified personal fitness trainer and lifestyle weight management specialist. In addition to holding a bachelor's degree of science, (laughs) in addition to holding a bachelor's of science degree in telecommunications management from DeVry University, her true passion is sharing and teaching about health, fitness, and nutrition while providing practical fat loss solutions that work. Without further ado, Success Fitness family, please welcome Miss Felicia Starks. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much, Christian, for the invite and for all the love. (laughs) No problem. No problem. Yeah, I just wanted to actually just bring you on the show to actually just highlight you. Um, We're in this digital world where, you know, we're online, you know, everybody's promoting what they're promoting. And um, I just wanted to take the time out to really just salute you and just get to know you just a little bit better. You have uh, joined uh, my group Success Fitness Family and you have a, um, a unique unique style of content. Even I'll watch your, your personal page and you bring a lot of laughter and a lot of um, uh, what we call like the soft side of fitness, more like the funny side to get people involved. And just with that angle of, of doing things, I'm like, okay, this is, this is pretty interesting. And so, you know, I was going through your pictures as well and saw, you know, the transformation and then, you know, visited, you know, one of your many websites that you have. I'm like, okay, she's super, (laughs) she's super legit being that, you know, we're all in the same field. I'm like, you know, I'm learning. I'm like, okay, she has her stuff set up like this and it looks like this. And on top of that, you know, just everything is just good. You're actually out, you know, helping people as, as many, as many as you can, like you said, well, as your bio read off is that, um, you know, you're out helping women and to empower them as well as through fitness and also finances. So just, you know, with that being said, you know, what or who inspired you to lose weight or go on your weight loss journey? And how much weight did you lose and what amount of time? Okay, so when I initially started in 2014, I mean, 2004, um, I was... Let's see, I've been married, I don't know. I've been married for a little bit, but we had talked about having a baby. Mm-hmm. And based on, like I had, cause you, we I talked about DeVry being a, you know, our uh, um, alumni, but um, I had just finished college and anyone who like, I was working, but I was also going to school full time. So, uh, my <laughs> nutrition was terrible. Like uh, Einstein, Einstein bagels, I think the, like I would have those bagels every Saturday. I would like look forward to those bagels. And so they started, like I started looking like I was eating bagels every <laughs> all the time. And um, because I was like, okay, I wanna be able to have a baby, but I don't want it to be so hard after I have the baby in order to lose because I'd have friends that they struggled And so one of my friends was doing Weight Watchers and she, her and I worked together and her name is Kimberly Ellis, the Ellison. And she started Weight Watchers and I was like, hold up. I saw you like two weeks ago and you look different. And she told me she started Weight Watchers. So I started that. And back in 2000, that started in May. And then I ended up moving, uh, relocating to California. And Anybody who's gone through a move, let alone across the country, you know, that can be crazy. And it was, it, it would be easy for me to say, okay, forget about all the whole, the weight loss, but I had already started losing weight. And I believe I, my, at my heaviest, I was like 166, 167. 
and I got down to, I want to say one before I got to California, maybe like 140. I don't remember exactly. Um, but I re also remember that like by the time that I, I, cause I, I wasn't really tied to a number. I wanted to, I wanted to get into this size four. <laughs> and so I remember going shopping and I shopped at New York and company all the time. And I, I finally was able to wear these jeans. I mean, these pants and like I wore the pants <laughs> two weeks later, found out I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow oh wow oh wow so you at least still just hit your goal right you I hit my goal. Goal. Yes. you're trying to you're trying to have a baby and then you're at yes. the same time trying to uh get down to this pant size you weren't really tracking the weight by the scale and i think that's dope um because we we think the only way to measure um as far as health is on the scale and there's different ways where you can have a victory. Uh, what they call it in, in Weight Watchers, non-scale victories, yes. was those pants that, that you wore in. So that's, that's dope to just not chase that particular number of the scale. You were chasing the number on the clothing rack. Yeah. So yeah, that's a whole different type of, type of mindset to go into. So during that time, what was your diet and nutrition like? You know, what did it uh, consist of during your initial weight loss what did your your diet and nutrition consist of? of of course a lot of the weight watchers i was doing the points and then because it was like weight watchers back in 2004 so there was no online stuff we did like meetings where we were actually going in and i remember having this i just threw this calculator away like a month ago but it was a calculator <laughs> it was like big like this phone and you you like put your points in and there was a book like I had, I, I bought all the books cause I wanted to make sure that I did like my, cause my husband and I did it together. And a, a lot of it was the me going by the, the Weight Watcher stuff. But then I also started once I got to, once I moved, it was a lot easier for me to do like the lean cuisine and the healthy choice. Of course, now looking back, I was like, mm, not the best thing to eat because it was a lot of like it was frozen and I like got so burnt out on it but um so because after I got to the after I got down and even after I had my son I was like okay I've got to get this way back off and so it was easier for me to eat those um as opposed to like we would cook a lot I think we, I even had a, a, a time of, of there was a, a period a small period of time where we did no um, meat, but that didn't last long. Cause yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. I can only no, imagine. that did not last. But at least you've seen some, some benefits from it, uh, yep. during that time period though, right? Yes, yes. Yes. So it wasn't anything crazy. Um, I didn't eat a lot of salads. I was like counting calories and, um, and it's even thinking about now, like had I known then I would have gotten different results, but I started counting calories and then that took my fitness like to a whole different level. So, but, so I was like counting calories and then I started kind of really tracking my weight. Okay. And um, I'm diving into to that um, because that is a very tough thing to do is just track calories, right? Um, personally and just as well as through some of my clientele. Um, and just the challenge of, you know, tracking those numbers and being, it's more about the diligency of the tracking numbers. It's not so much the tracking of the food. Um, and maybe I'm just, that's just my perception of how to look at that particular um, situation. But talk a little bit more about just the importance of tracking your calories. I say this often, if you, what you, you cannot manage, you cannot manage what you don't measure. So if you don't know where you are, how can you figure out where you're gonna go? And so it's important even in today, like not, I, I wouldn't suggest anyone just track calories. If you're going to, if you're really wanting to see where you are, look at where your calories are and, and also look at what your protein is. Those are, in my opinion, those are the two most important because calories, you can have, let's say, 
1700. You have 1700 calories worth of a whole bunch of crap and still not necessarily be full as opposed to if you are tracking and saying, okay, I want to make sure I get this much protein and I want to hit these calories. Everything else is kind of like a feeling. Like I, I call it like playing Jenga. You're trying to fit things in. And so you know what your number needs to be. And I always tell my clients, don't try to be perfect. Um, the, the goal is to get within 5% plus or minus of what your goal is. But if you can track those two and see where you are versus where you need to be, that changes your whole physique. Right, right. So being that the emphasis um, you had just mentioned was about um, protein um, in your particular way of, of looking at things, calories and, and protein, did you start getting more into the importance of uh, protein for, uh, we'll say, like workout um, recuperation? Um, so you had to been doing a lot of as far as working out during that time. So I can see those, those biceps <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, so like how many days a week did you work out? What was your workout routine? Um, and did you have a personal trainer during that time? And how did you, how did you get? Okay. Into that? okay. So that's a great question. And it's a great segue because, um, I remember all this time I was in California and I didn't have a trainer. I would go to 24 hour fitness and do their classes wasn't really comfortable doing workouts on my own. Um, in 2012, we were back here and I was like, cause I would always go to the gym, but I would have people ask me questions about working out. And I was like, eh, I don't know, but let me go ahead and get certified. So I got certified, but never used it. <laughs> cause I just was like, not comfortable with um, the whole program design, like the one-on-one -on -one thing. So in 2014, um, I was going to be turning 40. So I, a friend of mine was going to do a competition and she was like, Hey, come work out with me and with my trainer. So she had given me her trainer's information. And have you ever given, had somebody give you something like a number and they'd be like, okay, call them. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, Ugh. And then she was like, well, he said you ain't called. I was like, dang. Right. They hold, they hold you accountable. I'm like, I'm going to call him on my time. Don't rush me. This is my process. <laughs> so, so I ended up calling. And that was my first time hiring a trainer. Listen, I have so much respect for people who do personal training because it is a lot of energy. It's a lot of time. And um, once I put my money into it, I was like, that changed everything. So, but uh, mind you, my goal was just for like, it was for me to look good for my 40th birthday, not to compete. And along the way, I started in January, I think in March, he was like, Hey, what do you think about competing? I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Like, no. So, um, like when I say training, like we were working out probably yeah, four days a week. And we would do, it would, it would be back day, leg day, um, chest day, um, shoulder, you know, shoulders and biceps. So like it was, a, you know, at least four days a week working out and um, the eating, I didn't even, I really didn't have any kind of regimen. I was just kind of, I would ask him like, Hey, what do I need to be eating? And he would just give me, you know, like, you know, you need to be eat this. You need to, you know, maybe try some egg whites. That was because I used to, my husband used to eat egg whites, and I was like, Ugh. that was a right. girl. I tried to fix some egg whites and burned them one time. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> yeah, know how I did like, that. Like it, it takes. Um, so it wasn't anything. It, um, it wasn't anything crazy, crazy when I first started. But because my first bodybuilding competition was in 2014, and it was more than anything just for to be an experience. But once I did it that one time. I've loved it. And so I've been doing it ever since. Okay. So during that whole uh, intro, so let's see, you're a mother, your personal trainer, um, also nutritionist, and also hold a bachelor's degree in telecommunications. Okay. She did not let me know she competed. So she's hiding all these, oh, no, <laughs> these, no, these accomplishments. No, wait, 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 wait. No, that is so much respect, though. I have so much respect for people who compete um, as far as bodybuilding. 
and just going through that whole process because just looking at um, people who who've done that legit come from um, being overweight and then losing weight and then losing it to a point to where you want to compete as a as a as a bodybuilder or just to not I want to say show off your figure but right. you know it's more from That's the standpoint of like yeah yeah you are but you know in this day and age people are so sensitive you have to understand that if somebody's going to a point to where they don't ever want to show their legs or their stomach or you know their chest and then they do and they do it in a on a level in a stage like that where people actually judge them and literally give literally give their opinions uh if they're first second or third even if they don't place i just think that takes so much courage so i just want to salute you on that because i've seen when people just as far as even as far as they're eating and their in their and their and their workouts and stuff like that that is so much commitment right there so it's not, I don't, I don't ever take it and I don't want anybody else to ever take it as, you know, somebody showing off because, you know, they're out there in their bikinis, they're doing, no, that's, that is a sign of work. If you don't know, that is a sign of dedication and, and work and diligence. Um, so I salute you <laughs> in that. <Thank> you. <laughs> and <laughs> so like during that time, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've seen it, but it's just like, you know, I just didn't read it. Um, when it when the when the email came through but during that whole whole time what what did you learn about yourself during that whole transformation phase oh my goodness um that was probably the this has probably been something that has been mine like i had started working on my mindset in 2010 but when i started competing it just went to another level because what you said the whole dedication of it um, it requires for you to be disciplined to some extent. Um, and you have to be focused. And my time management, like the things that I, and I'm still not all that, all that great at time management all the time, but um, it shifted how I was, it shifted how my business is. And so the, the what I will say is that it transformed my, and mindset as far as like, Really, there's nothing that is beyond your reach if you work for it. Um, and if you don't work for it, then you don't want it or it's just not the time. But um, it definitely, it, it changed, it changed the, the whole transformation part changed, even how I parent, because a lot of the, the things that like my son, he's 15 now. So he's been, since he's been seven, um, I've been competing, but it's also, I've had a chance to, to, to uh, show him lessons that I probably wouldn't have as far as like, there's going to be some times where you go out for things and you're not going to get it. Like, you're like, it doesn't matter how great you feel like you are. It's, that's not going to be your day, but just because it's not your day, that time doesn't mean that it's not the time for you to do it. So, um, it's been life-changing and, I, I wouldn't be the Felicia that you see today online had it not been for the, even cause when I first started, I was so not ready to be on stage. Like I say someone that's a contender where, okay, you didn't did some work. My first time I was just happy to be up there. And I was like, if I don't bust my face, like I'm good. And it, like you said, it takes a lot to you to do that, especially you for some I call I said if you are modest modesty is out the door when you start competing because you like gotta go get tan and when you get tan y'all all y'all lined up y'all have no clothes on but like you like okay well where are we drawing off well we're just drawing off looking at each other and it's just like <laughs> it's some of the weirdest stuff but um I'm like, I'm so strong mentally, like it would really take a lot for, for me, not, it, it would like, I, nothing really gets to me because I'm like, whatever is happening for me is meant for to happen. So I'm just, I'm embracing it and I'm not like resistant to when obstacles happen. I'm like expecting them and like, okay, how am I gonna deal with it? 
is this something I can handle or is this something that's God to handle? And if it's for God to handle, I'm gonna go ahead and go to bed. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, because just like you said, when um, just dealing with, you know, being backstage and the competition and you really have to just be lasered in. So just um, how you were lasered in as far as doing your diet and your workout regimens, you're competing now, you know, you transform, you transform your mind from just saying that, okay, I'm going to just try to get into this dress or get into the size and uh -huh. then, you know, having, a, having your son and then still having, having the courage and the professionalism to compete. So that, that says a lot. Now, what is your current nutrition plan and what is your current workout, um, plan consist of or that you do okay so right now because i'm prepping for a con competition i work out twice a day three times a week so monday tuesday wednesday and then um so monday tuesday wednesday is twice a week i mean twice a day thursdays once i don't do any workouts on friday and then saturday is conditioning and whatever he decides to throw in so I have two days that um, is considered off where I just do cardio. So, and that's because I'm leading up to a competition. Outside of the competition, it would just be Monday through um, Thursday, yeah, Monday through Wednesday, and then a Saturday. So typically four days, but right now I'm doing five, yeah, five days. Um, and nutrition wise, nothing crazy I eat like, I do my own nutrition. This is my first full prep doing my nutrition. So before I paid someone to do it, um, up till last year in October. And then I decided to do a competition in December. And I had to, like, I knew, I know about nutrition and it's just, it's like, do you train yourself? Yo, yeah, 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 most definite, okay. most definite, most definite. It's still kind of, but for me, like, when I go to the gym, I don't want to have to think about nothing. Like I want him to tell me, go there. Okay, go do this. I don't want him on my face. Tell me what I need to do and go go do with them people. I, right, right. Because you're already familiar. You. You're already yeah. familiar with the exercises and the, you know form and everything like that. And it is important to have a um, a plan that's legit, just written out for you, or just kind of just uh, what you call it, like carved out for you, versus yes. going in guessing. Now we've yeah. worked out enough times to understand like, all right, today is like, okay, I'm a freelance today. Or you yeah. go into the gym and say, you know, eh, today's gonna be back in, in chess. You can pick through your Rolodex of gazillion different combinations. Yeah. Uh, yes. You know, what, what do you wanna do? You wanna do ISO, you wanna do barbell, you wanna use resistant bands, you wanna use dumbbells, do you, you know what I mean? You wanna use body yeah. weight, whatever yeah. the case may be. But how alleviating is that when you can have somebody just do that for you? And you say, yeah. oh, all right, that, all right, cool. I'll be back in about an hour. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's why I said I really appreciate, like salute and appreciate personal trainers because um, you guys do amazing work and it's a lot to even deal with if you if you have a client that is, cause you, you, have, your, you have your different types, um, but I really salute you guys. Um, nutrition wise, let's see, chicken, salmon, um, what else do I eat? Cod. And sometimes I eat turkey tenderloin. Nothing crazy. Um, I eat, it's always normally a certain um, ounces. So maybe like four or five ounces, but I eat salmon every day. Um, now I when you say cod, your eyebrow raised. Now <laughs> I'm 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 gonna take a wild guess is that you hate that smell, don't you? It is you, not, you hate that. <laughs> it is not my favorite thing to eat, mm -hmm. but I smoke my food every oh, week. Oh wow, okay. We're gonna have to talk more about that. <laughs> so every yeah. Friday I cook out. I started this in 2016. Um my dad cooked some he cooked some cod for me. And um I was like Cause I've always loved like barbecue food, mm -hmm. but it was, so it was, it would only be like at Labor Day or Memorial Day. And I was like, I love that. And so I just started cooking my food every week. So I prep like, so yesterday all my food got cooked. 
for the week, all my 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 fridge is fully stocked and ready for me to eat. Like you're not meals. Playing no games. You're not, not playing, playing no, no games. games. I like that. I like that. And let me let me tell you, let me tell you why. When you are, you know, sometimes you get to where you're hungry and you like, when we hungry, we make terrible decisions. <laughs> so at this point, it's like you want, I want to present my best physique in in two weeks. So in order for me to make sure that that happens to like, there's a lot of things that I don't have control over. What I eat is one thing I have control over. So when I get hungry, even though I'm at home all the time, because I thought, you know, last year when the whole pandemic started, I was like, well, maybe I won't prep every day. I was like, that's the craziest thing because I still, whenever I'm hungry, I get ready to eat, but I don't eat anything. I eat, I'm gonna tell you this, I eat one of these every day. This is a, it's a protein bar and, but the, the calories is like 140 calories, 17 protein, six grams of sugar. That fits into my macros. So I've been losing in like some, and so, and I encourage whoever is listening or watching this, you have to include foods that you really, really like. However you like it. If you don't like baked food, like you just said, Christian, the whole cot is not my favorite. Mm -hmm. But out of white fish, I don't like tilapia or I think it's sway or swai, whatever mm -hmm. it's called. Mm -hmm. um, cod is the one that's thick enough that I just imagine it's something else. <laughs> right, 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 right. Because it's almost about if you get a good piece of salmon, because you mentioned salmon. It, yes like that density and that thickness is about the same. It, yes. It's a, it's about the same. Now, before I go to my next question, because you kind of surprised me with the, with the smoke. So you actually smoke your own food just as well. And I'm asking that as somebody who barbecues and smokes just as well. So really? now you're talking to a whole other different lane. Oh, I'm yeah. ready to ask you, I'm like, what kind of smoke do you got? What kind of wood do you got? You know what I mean? Because it's like, so at one point in time, I went down a rabbit hole for about two years, just trying to uh -huh. figure all of that out. I'm pretty good now, but so I just want to hear your take on as far as like, uh, you know, what you do, your whole process and that. So I um, started out with a, I think it was a Kingsford Grill and I graduated two years ago. I got this, it's called out, I think it's, I think it's called Outdoor Grill, but I, I got it from um, Academy. And so I, I have the one that has the, the barrel and then the smoke box attached to it. Mm -hmm. And so most of the time I'm doing mesquite or hickory wood. Um, if I can find pecan, I'll do that. But I do the pellets. I do the chunks or the big, like really. So like, I was like, it's ridiculous how much I spend on <laughs> on this whole wood and, and like you said it's easy for you to go down this rabbit hole but um i i use i always go to sam's and they had a spray of uh, this um they had this charcoal that i really liked and of course they stopped they discontinued it so i've just been using match light um i use that in the put the the charcoal in the barrel part and then the um the the firewood a little bit of charcoal and my pellets in the firebox. Okay. Okay. So you see, she knows what she's talking about right there. <laughs> Cause see, I don't have none of that. I just have, <laughs> um, I do have a, have a propane grill. I keep calling it a gas grill. And every time somebody says what, and I'm like, okay, it's a propane grill. I got a propane grill and I have one of those, uh, smoker boxes. They, okay. they kind of, uh, remind you of like a, uh, filing cabinet right. or, or whatever. But, um, you know, she says she has a Sam's membership as well and go there. I'm there probably about at least three times a week. Really? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, you know, let me buy this in bulk. Let me buy that. Let me buy my paper towels. Let me buy my coffee. Let me buy this. But they also have good salmon. So when you say it, Cod, I'm like, all right, I may go there. Matter of fact, I was just there yesterday. So I may go there and try some and try, try some cod again. I may give it. It's good. It, it's about this thick. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I, I cooked yep. it one time and I just didn't care for the smell that was in, uh, that was in the house. But far as the taste wise, it's like, no, I can, 
I can legit, you know, adjust it. But when you say it's smoke, I never thought about smoking it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get your smoked cod recipe and I'm going to try it. So whatever, <laughs> however you prepare it, I'm going okay. to it just like that. Uh, I'm going to okay. shoot a video too and I'm going to put, put your name. Miss Felicia Starks, okay. <laughs> world champion bodybuilders <laughs> recipe. That's what I'm gonna put down. Smoke okay. master, we're gonna have to get our smoke master. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I legit used to would not like, I was scared to light the grill. And mm -hmm. after that time that my dad swung my food, I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to do this myself because my dad lives out of town. And I was like, how am I gonna do this? And I was so scared of, doing the grill but every now and then I'll do a live because I was like more women like and not just women but a lot of times we don't don't try different stuff because maybe our husbands always do it or somebody always does it and like that's the and now my son loves his uh salmon smoked um if I do burgers and stuff so I'll I'll cook whatever I'm whatever we're having for the week I'll cook that up and I'll put his stuff in the freezer. I use the, um, you know, the vacuum seal, whatever. Mm -hmm. I use those. Okay. So now as you talk and I'm like, you know what, after this interview, I'm legit. Cause I got to do more prep to today. I had no, I, I actually, <laughs> so yesterday I went to Sam's and I don't know where, where, where city are you in right now? Carol? I'm in Arlington, Texas. Okay. Texas. So have you been seeing those prices go up far as in food at, at Sam's there? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So I just bought a, I think it's about like a three pound uh, salmon filet there yesterday. So I'm going to put that on um, the smoker later today. And the reason why I'm hesitant, so I'm like, do I really want to put the smoker out? Uh, or do I just want to put it on the grill? Cause I have it. My grill is actually the dimensions of, you know, kind of like your average, like sheet pan. So I yes. can put the salmon on the sheet mm -hmm. pan and I'm going to mm -hmm. throw uh a piece of uh, what I got mesquite wood. I got mesquite. Let's see, okay. Put it on there and just let it just smoke right, right. there. Because what in in all honesty, you really only need maybe about twenty five minutes of smoke to get mm -hmm. the flavor in there. Right. But if I'm gonna really do it, I pretty much I like smoke something for like two hours. So just try to just, yes. just keep loading the barrel up. Just keep yes. loading it uh, with 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 chunks. Um, okay. See, we we went down a rabbit <laughs> hole. That wasn't even intent. <laughs> I just got passionate. I'm like, all right, she gave me some ideas, right? Each one, teach one. You know, we yes. can all learn from each other. And like, yes. seriously. Um, so what, what advice would you give those who are hesitant on starting their weight loss journey? Um, and would you recommend or not recommend hiring a personal trainer? Um, if you're watching this or you're listening to this, and if you thought about doing it, about starting, Maybe you don't know where to start. Maybe you feel like when you go to the gym that people are gonna be looking at you or gonna be saying whatever. Um, I say this, put your headphones on um, or this, this is after, but you're not going to regret starting your journey. Whether it's starting to walk whether it's getting on a bike, whether you are going to take classes and you're swimming, doing something where you are moving, we are meant to move. So um, I say start wherever you are and just understand that you're gonna have times where you're not gonna wanna do it. You're not going to want to, um, you're not gonna wanna, you, the feeling is not gonna be there. But I'll tell you this, um, nobody can improve your health better than you can. And nobody can want you to improve your health more than you, you can. So people can try to do whatever and say whatever until you're ready. It's, it's, and you already know this. If you're watching this or you're listening to this, you already know that it's, it's all on you. So I say, whether it's going to a health club that where they have, where they have tra uh, trainers that can maybe walk you through one session and show you some things around walking, walking around the gym or start um, Zuma classes, start something, do something that you really, really like and then take it from there. Don't think that you have to start out lifting weights, even though that's, that's what I would recommend you go to, but um, a dance class, a class where, you, where it's, it's a controlled where they showing you how to lift. 
definitely get started. Um, and I definitely highly recommend you hire a trainer if you, if you have the money. Um, even if it's something where you're doing maybe one or two sessions a week, but that's gonna be the best investment. And if you're going to hire a trainer, do not waste their time. Do not waste your time. Um, soak up as much as you can. And one, when you show up, they're going to meet you where you are and encourage you along the way. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, I just want to thank you for coming on to the Success Fitness Podcast. And I hope you and those who are out there watching and listening found inspiration in today's episode. This brings us to the end of another episode of the Success Fitness Podcast with our guest, Miss Felicia Starks. Please tell everybody watching and everybody who's listening where to uh, find you, where they can hire you as a personal trainer, um, a nutritionist, um, anything, whether it's your websites, IG, here's your time <laughs> and go. Thank you so much. Um, so Felicia Starks Fitness is on um, social media on IG and um, Facebook, Felicia J Starks on Twitter. I'm on TikTok, Felicia Starks Fit. I have some funny stuff over there, um, but I have some, some in, uh, educational stuff as well. FeliciaStarks.com is probably going to be the best place to, that'll lead you to wherever you need to go. You can reach out to me, um, FeliciaStarks.com or Stark Naked uh, Nutrition. And the Stark Naked Nutrition is focused solely on nutrition. All righty. All righty. Well, um, yeah, that'll honestly just be it right there miss world champion bodybuilder we're speaking that positivity and that blessing yes, over amazing. over over your life uh soon to be um miss texas and smoking and grilling you're you're down there with the big boys down there well we got to talk yes. about this later you're down there with yes. the big boys down in in texas where they breed uh barbecuers and barbecue smoking champions and everything like that but it was us it was good to finally get a get a chance to meet you and 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 talk to you i just want to salute you and all your accomplishments and pray blessings and peace and safety over your family you. and yeah. everybody go to feliciastarks.com thank you for joining us and tuning in to the success fitness podcast peace out Thank you. Are you looking for a personal trainer that will focus on you to help achieve success in your fitness journey? If yes, please book your in-person or Zoom one-on-one -on -one personal training sessions with me, Christian Evans, at ChristiansWeightSuccess.net.